Okay, so the Beats Solo 4 have just been released. I've spent about a week with them, and I actually think that these are the perfect everyday headphones. Almost. Now, when I unboxed these headphones last week, they had about 70%, and throughout the week, I've used them pretty extensively for testing. So I listened to music, watched videos, watched movies, and even went on a run with them. And after about a week of testing, the battery in these went from 70% down to 50%. And so if you were to continue this pace, these headphones will last five weeks, which is pretty insane considering that my AirPods only last about a week. And that's because these headphones actually have 50 hours of battery life. Now these headphones actually don't have active noise canceling, which is I think part of how they're able to achieve that battery life. But yeah, depending on how heavy you use these, you can expect them to last easily over a week, if not two weeks, uh, without charging at all. Now the reason that I bring up the whole battery thing is because I think the Beats Solo lineup has always been targeted towards people who have this on-the-go lifestyle. So in the marketing material, you see people jogging, jump roping, rollerblading, and also whatever this is. But I imagine that these headphones will also be popular among those who commute every day, or maybe they use them at the office, and then they wanna use them at the gym afterwards. And when you're on the go, the last thing you probably wanna worry about is your headphones dying or needing to charge them. So long battery life definitely helps with that. But another aspect of being on the go is portability. So the Beats Solos will fold down pretty compactly and neatly into this carrying pouch that it comes with. And compared to the AirPods Max and XM5s, which don't fold, you can see how much less room they take up. So yeah, now you can throw your everyday headphones into your everyday backpack. These headphones are also extremely lightweight, coming in at 218 grams. Compare that to my AirPods Maxes in the high 300s and the XM5s in the mid 200s really makes you appreciate how light these are and sort of makes these a really great lightweight and portable headphone. So right there, I'd say those are the two biggest strengths of these headphones, the insanely long battery life and the portability. Now, one thing you might've noticed is that Beats doesn't really change their design all that much. And so these headphones look pretty much identical to the ones that came out a decade ago, which I think just goes to speak how timeless, I guess, this design is. Some would even go as far to say that this is an iconic design. The matte finish does a pretty good job hiding fingerprints. And overall, you're just getting a really bold and fashion forward look that you can expect from most Beats products. Another thing that I appreciate on these headphones is the physical control on the left ear cup because when you're on the go, you don't wanna be fidgeting with touch controls. Just ain't gonna cut it. No, 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 you want physical buttons. And so even when I took these out on a jog, it was really easy for me to reach up and press the volume up and down buttons with a really satisfying click. Now, some other things to note on the software side, these headphones integrate nicely with both Apple and Android ecosystems. They both support one touch pairing, find my support. And on the Apple side of things, as soon as you pair these headphones to one of your iCloud devices, they'll show up on all of your other ones. So as soon as I paired these to my iPhone, it showed up on my MacBook, my Apple TV, as well as my Apple Watch to instantly start listening on those devices as well. The one strange caveat though, is that they don't actually support auto switching. And so if you're used to your AirPods switching from your iPhone to your MacBook and vice versa, um, you're gonna have to dig through the Bluetooth settings to do that same thing on these headphones. But now you're probably wondering, how do these headphones actually sound? And I think the sound quality of the Beats Solo 4s are average for a wireless headphone. The thing you need to know is that these are on-ear headphones. They're not over-ear. And so what they lack is soundstage immersion and just overall depth and clarity, I'd say. The bass also isn't very tight or isn't very pronounced. Um, it sort of is just there in the mix. In fact, the overall sound signature, I'd say, is relatively neutral for a Beats product, which can be ideal because uh, with a neutral sound signature, your ears won't get fatigued as quickly, um, but they might not be as fun to listen to as some of the more bass-heavy headphones. In terms of technical features, they do support spatial audio as well as high-res listening through a wired connection, but but I think their sound fidelity might not fully deliver on these features. And overall, I would just recommend that you keep the spatial audio off and just listen to these through Bluetooth. Now, so far we've covered features that are great for an everyday pair of headphones. Great battery life, good portability, and adequate sound quality. So what's up with the almost in the title. Well, during my week long testing period where I really took these through its paces, there were sort of three things that I wish these headphones did better in or just straight up lacked. And the first thing is comfort, but it's sort of this 
double-edged sword because on the one hand, the strong clamping force makes it so that I can actually run with these and that they don't have any risk of falling off. But on the other hand, it does sort of make my ears hurt after about an hour of listening. I think a combination of the strong clamping force as well as the fact that these are on ear as opposed to over ear makes these sort of like a three out of five in terms of comfort. But then the second thing that I ran into was the lack of transparency mode. Now, one interesting thing that I found while testing these headphones is that the clamping force is so strong that it almost feels like you have noise cancellation. And so when you've got these on, it's actually really hard to hear what's going on around you. And for an everyday headphone, you're going to run into everyday scenarios which require outside attention. If someone were to come up and talk to you or if you're out on a jog, you want to be aware of your surroundings. Now, this isn't a deal breaker in most situations. If you're working and someone comes up to you, you can just sort of just take them off and put them around your neck. It's actually pretty comfortable. But then for the running scenario, I don't know, I just wouldn't feel comfortable running with these again because I actually was crossing the street and I saw a car coming up behind me and I had no idea that it was there. And so, yeah, I really wish that these had some sort of transparency mode or active noise canceling. But then again, it's just that trade off because if they were to add that, then it probably wouldn't have that great battery life. And then the third thing is that there's no on head detection. When you go to take these off, the music actually continues playing. So you have to pause them manually. And there were a couple of times throughout the week where I either took them off and just expected them to pause and they didn't. Or if you somehow take these headphones off and you forgot to turn them off, um, they will just stay powered on until you actually come back to turn them off. So a couple of times where I took them off went to go do something, pulled out my phone, maybe to watch a video or something with sound, and then realized that all the sound was coming out of my headphones, which were still on in another room. And yeah, I feel like on-ear detection is just one of those things that should just come with every wireless headphone now in 2024. And it's a little bit disappointing to see them missing from these Beats Solo 4. Now, I don't bring up these three things to say that they're deal breakers. In fact, I think it's just part of the natural trade-offs that you get with any other tech product. Like if you're looking for something with active noise cancellation and really great sound quality, then these probably aren't it. But if you're looking for a pair of headphones that has extremely long battery and is ultra portable, and you don't really care about any of those fancy features, then these headphones might be right for you. You can take these to the gym, take these to work, um, you can study with these. These are probably gonna be a really good pick. Now these headphones retail for $200. I personally would value them closer to 150. Um, you can probably find them on sale very soon. I'll have links down below if you wanna check the pricing. But yeah, these are almost the perfect everyday headphones. Not for me, but maybe for you. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more tech content. Leave a like on your way out and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.